here's some questions that some of the uh, the fans have asked me to to ask you. So you're going to be in the animated hot seat right now, oh, sister. No. Okay, okay. It's time. I can handle it. I can handle it. <sighs> Who is your favorite total drama character? Courtney's excluded. <laughs> <laughs> She would pick herself, wouldn't she? <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm going to go with Harold. Harold. Oh, I love Harold. <laughs> when he was doing that beatboxing. That was amazing. I mean, it was one of the classic total drama moments. Classic. And it's funny because they played that uh, Harold beatboxing thing that w during the talent show. And then a few months later, uh, because that thing went all over YouTube, Everybody like it that, went yeah. viral. And then a few months later, I don't know if you remember this. I didn't, I, I sort of asked around, but there was a commercial for Yop yogurt where the guy is, he bops it and he basically beatboxes with Yop and da 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 da. And okay. it was cut exactly like Harold's beatboxing thing. So I'm like. He started. He started a movement. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's really funny, and I mean, you know, it's also the the writing is, it's just it's, it's amazing. So great, the writing is so good, and um, that it really makes the characters come alive. The combination of just getting the right voice, and and um, you know, it's it's great when you would get a script. You know, they email us the script in advance so we can we can read read the story, read the whole script, Christian, the whole script. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not just your own lines. And uh, I'm guilty of that too. But um, and when you're reading it, I, you can I can hear the voices in my head. Yeah. You know, I'm reading it, and and it's it's really well written, and and they also are good to they give us a chance to sort of you know, ad lib a little bit. And once you get comfortable with the character, um, you know, there's a certain element of, of creative input that they are gracious enough to allow the actors yeah. to have. So, yeah. And it, it was, uh, it was interesting because when we first started, uh, total drama, we did, we didn't, we hadn't really even seen drawings of the characters yet at this point. Um, there wasn't really, I, I equate it to this. It was like doing, like, because we're, we're trying to record and we're trying to, you know, get the, the pace, the tone, the whole thing of the show. And there was like, what, 20 some odd characters, 26 characters. Yeah. yeah. There was 26 characters in the first season and trying to remember the names and who's who without oh, yeah. any drawing. It, I, I, I see it as uh, trying to do puppeteering in the dark in another room from around the corner yeah. by remote control. That's how it was yeah. a tough go at the beginning. Um, and how did you find it working with like, have you ever worked on a cartoon where there was so many cast members? No, I think, I think this was, this was the max. I mean, this yeah. was, you know, cause generally, you know, we could take a show like 16 where there were really the six main characters mm -hmm. and then, then, you know, maybe, that many sort of main recurring characters but generally speaking it was those six core whereas this like you said was 26 people and and especially in the first few episodes they wanted wanted everybody to yeah. have their moment so that the you could get to know these characters actually interestingly i i did not read for courtney um oh. i read i auditioned for a couple of characters i auditioned for bridget i auditioned for heather and I auditioned for Katie and Sadie. Right. And I didn't get cast at all. And as I, you know, you go to you go to a lot of auditions and some of them some of them you walk away going, "Okay, I'm going to leave that and we'll see what happens." And there's other ones where you go, "Oh, I really 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 hope this happens." And you call your agent, "Have you heard anything?" <laughs> yeah. And he says, yeah. If I hear anything, I'll call you. And uh, I, know I didn't that hear one anything, well. and it went away. And I was on to other things and whatever. Uh, and then I got a call saying that they had actually recast the role of Courtney. So I believe that the first two episodes are a different voice. 
Really? Or you didn't go back and redo them? I, I, I don't remember that we, we actually redid them. So wow. that might be a little bit of a investigative reporting that you can't really Go do. digging. <laughs> go digging and find out, yeah. folks. They do it. Yeah. They will, too, you and, know. You know, that happens for various reasons. It doesn't have anything mm -hmm. to do necessarily with um, the, the voice actor's capabilities. It has to do with the way certain voices work together. Mm -hmm. It could have been a voice that sounds too close to another voice. Um, it could have been the person's availability. So th people get you know, recast and things like that for various reasons. And so it was interesting because I guess in the end, you know, things worked out and it was sort of meant to be. I was kind of bummed out at first that I, you know, that I seemingly didn't get cast on the show, but then yeah. it worked out. Um, now, I've, you know, I've had a pretty good clean record of, you know, you get a gig and you're the guy and you stay on it. But I've I've seen cast members beside me and around me come and go for the same character, and they've changed people a few times. And uh, that's happened to me once mm -hmm. in my in my career, and uh, uh, it kind of rocked me a bit. Oh, you yeah. know, it really did because I was like, hey, I'm the guy. Yes. You know, and this was a big deal. And they, uh, I won't mention the cartoon. He wants to mention it. I do. Uh, <laughs> it's radiating. But from you me. know what? That oh. was a that was a real blow. And like I know in this business we have to have a tough skin and you gotta roll with it and not take things too personally. It's just business. But have you have you had a uh, one of these moments where it's been like, you know what? That really sucked. Um, well actually, um you know, recording Sailor Moon, this is going way back to really my first um, my first experience working on a cartoon. Now, it's a different experience working on Sailor Moon because it's dubbing. It's originally in Japanese, and then, you know, we are working with a picture that's already created, so we have to make our mm -hmm. dialogue match. And there's several different methods that they use for doing that. And the, re the method that we were using at the time is is no longer used, but it's called Rhythmo Band. And basically, you have the screen with the picture in front of you, you've got your script, and then there's a band that gets projected across the, the, the wall with your lines on it. And as your lines cross this center marker, that's when you have to say them so that they will line up with the picture. Like karaoke. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like karaoke. Very good analogy, yeah. Now, I was getting dizzy watching this, mm -hmm. and um, there was a, a situation where the director was, um, you know, pretty pretty hard on us, to be honest, and I felt like I was out of my element. I, I, I actually was came to tears at one point because I didn't feel like I was giving the director what she wanted, and I was overwhelmed with the whole situation. And, and it rocked me because I thought, wow, maybe I'm just not good at this. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Um, but, uh, it was, it was good, I think, to have that experience really early because mm -hmm. it really got me on my game and it taught me that, yes, you have to have a thick skin. And again, it's not personal if you're being recast. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're acting like, if, if you are, if you're not acting professionally, then, then it's, that's a different story, but, um, you have to have a thick skin and you have to be confident and, uh, it took me a while to sort of open up and get that confidence as a voice actor when, you know, they might throw something at you at an audition and you have to go for it. You have to put yourself out there and make a silly voice and you might, people might laugh and <laughs> not in a good way. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be ready for that. So it takes a certain kind of person, I think, to, to take that leap, you know.